Hello again and welcome to Man's Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. Hi guys, I'm Carla Garrick. And uh, she has one wrinkled sleeve and I'm itchy. No, no, so like, welcome to the show. I can't wait till I have, my next house is gonna have washer dryer in my closet. Like it's all gonna be, cause I would have a, a you know bathroom and walk-in closet off my bedroom, but I'm gonna put the laundry right there. So you can take things out of the dryer and hang them on hangers. Yeah. I hate it. I, I, I could set timers. I can do all the things. I turn on the dryer. I go off and then I'm like, damn it. I forgot about the dryer. And you go down and everything's wrinkled and then you fluff them again and you forget again. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. Mine's down in the basement too. Yeah. But this one, uh, my mother knit this nice for sweater. in case my mother is yeah. watching the show. Uh, so it matches my hair, but it is mohair, I think. Yeah, and, and it's it itchy. Itchy. And so... When I was driving here, like get that itchy, itchy. I, I was like, Ugh, okay, but, but at least you like, have a little bit of a turtleneck, and it's not rubbing against your neck because that would make yeah, me crazy. Yeah, so so I, I was like, why? Why would people be like, mohair is posh, and uh, you should wear this when it's yeah, like, I don't know. Is it like lobster? So I learned when I moved <laughs> to New Hampshire. I don't know if folks know this back home. So lobster used to be the food they gave to people in prison. It was because poor man's food because literally the lobsters back then were like yeah. this big. They were just, you know, Ever and they were cheap. And when railroads started using it as food on trains it and became people who weren't from our uh, area started going, oh, lobster. We're like, oh, this is kind of delicious. And then it became this posh Isn't thing. Isn't that funny? I think mohair is like lobster, yeah, but, but not the not same edible. because it's this is bad and lobster is good. I don't know what my point is. Anyway, welcome to the show, um, guys. <laughs> let's go back. So I saw this in the paper the other day. Okay. And I, I, I feel bad because I don't really always want to bitch about the cops. I don't. I, I, but there are things sometimes that I'm like, that, that just doesn't make sense. So it was, uh, this that I printed out was not from the Union Leader, but I know I read it in the Union Leader, which I hate the Union Leader's format. I say that every week. <laughs> uh, it takes me forever to watch, read the newspaper. But anyways, um, the headline was, Overall Crime Down, But Murder, Rapes, and Robberies Up in Manchester. And I thought, okay. okay just repeat those words yeah. for everyone back home. Overall Crime Down. But murder, rapes, and robberies up in 2023 in Manchester. Okay, so I want to tell you the following. Yes. First of all, I took an actual photo of that because I was going to share it on Twitter yeah. and be like, someone, tell me what other crimes really matter right. other than murder, right. well, rape, the big and ones, robbery, right? right? So those are, those are property crimes. Those are real crimes. This morning, because I hadn't thrown away that paper yet, it was lying on the dining room table, and my husband, Louis, picks up the paper and he goes, What? Crime down, but well, murder, rape, well, and robbery and, and up. It's like, what crimes I just are also, down? I feel like this. I feel like the police, and I, I, we can argue about whether they need them or don't. I feel like they were always being told, we just need more cops. We just need more cops. We need to hire more cops. We need to hire more cops. We need to hire more cops. If we just had more cops. Okay, so let's just say that's the case. But then, then we get a thing that says overall crime is down, and it does say... Manchester police responded to more than 100,000 calls for service in 2023, which was an 18% drop from the 10-year average and a 3% decrease from the year prior. So I'm like, okay, so if that number is accurate, and I can come back to why I think that is, that's a lot fewer. That's a lot fewer so, uh, calls. I mean, 100,000 calls in a city of 120,000 people is less than one call per person. Yeah. Um, Which one? It's, yeah. Okay. In a year. In a year. I mean, maybe. Uh, but I'm saying, but that's still not like an insane. I bet you of that 100,000, there are probably eight people who make the majority the calls. That's probably, of the calls. That, that's probably true. But um, it it's said, not I. <laughs> what I don't get is, then why do we need more police? I mean, I'm not saying we don't need more police, but I'm saying, which is it? Crime is down and they're responding to fewer calls then we shouldn't need more police. Or we do need more police because they have more things to do. And um, yeah, I just don't know. And it says, um, it goes on to say that there was, um, God, where is it? Overall crime incidents were down 19% from 2022. Okay. And down 36% from 10 years ago. Okay. Which I have, so crime, you're saying, I you want me to buy that from 2023, 2013, I never felt like there was so much crime. So 
We'll come back. Um, I said, including aggravated assault, murder, rape, and robbery was down 8% from a year ago and 32% over the past decade. So I don't know. Is murder rape up? Is murder rape down? This this is conflicting. I mean, just based on, and this is obviously specific to Manchester, yes. or maybe the numbers I have in my head are statewide, but I did notice there's been an uptick in homicides because I've Well, they did say there were, eight, there were eight homicides in Manchester, which was... A lot, a lot because uh, um, I mean the the uh, murder rate. I want to say around 2015, they said, 2020 uh, la, la, la. was uh, maybe 13 in the entire yeah. state. Yeah, which is insanely low. Which is one of the incredibly great things about New Hampshire, right? Like we actually yeah. still value life, and it's pretty safe, and there are fewer criminals, and there are a lot of people who carry guns. Those things might even be correlated. I don't so, know. You know. Granted, it's just Facebook, and maybe I'm just seeing it more because it's showing up more in my Facebook feed, feed or whatever. But there's constant, literally like constant, every day you see a picture of somebody that they're looking for who robbed one of the liquor stores. Or robbed, uh, this morning there was one, a guy that robbed REI in Bedford. And they all, it's just constant. And of course, half the time these people are wearing masks because we created that. Ooh. We said it's okay to completely cover your face for no reason. I, and then we're shocked that those people can get away with robberies. I, I, I do remember actually having that conversation and being like, you know who wears face masks? Criminals. Bend it. So, the, you see that, and the accident rate, I'm sorry, any, nobody with a straight face can tell me that they feel like people are better drivers or there are fewer accidents because it seems like every day I see something about a car rolled over or totally smashed just in Manchester, like general. Like all the time you'd see people drive, people don't seem to know how to drive anymore. So they're trying to say, they say in here that, um, Traffic division responded to 2,480 accidents last year, which is down from the year before. 2,480? So 2,480 so accidents. What? That's about five Seven a day? A day? That's okay. It. okay. But it says it's down from 2022. So you're going to tell me that while COVID was still going on and not everybody was working, there were more car accidents? No. See, if it was 2022, if 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 the died suddenly fact factoid plays into it. <laughs> no, well, but that's what that, I'm just saying. No, but you didn't hear that about that. something we talked yeah. about is because I actually said if there is this sort of um, uh, possible correlation, I guess, between uh, the, you know, an experimental medicine yes. and uh, and people driving in an experimental medicine that gives you strokes right. and heart attacks, right. which you don't want to be behind a, the wheel of a car right. when that's happening, then I actually predicted in 2021 that car accidents should be up in 22. So it might actually be interesting to go look at those because where the truth is starting to come out, it's not on the state's data. Right. It's on private right. insurance right. companies. I, I just find it, I don't know, I found it hard to believe. So then that led to, you know, this is how it is every week. I print something out and then something else happens and I'm like, well, that ties into it. So on Monday, and again, not meaning to pick on the police, but I had this conversation with my hairdresser and she was saying the same thing about the town she lived in and more in a general. So I'm gonna talk about one specific incident, but I, it's a more general thing that I don't think that, sometimes I feel like the police don't use common sense anymore. Like I don't think there's critical thinking skills sometimes. So Monday, I am on South Willow Street coming north and I see a cop car go flying down Beach Street with lights flashing, sirens through the intersection. And I thought, well, wow. And then while I'm waiting at the light, everybody starts to move and another one came through and it caught my attention because they didn't really have their sirens on probably long enough. And they, somebody almost clipped them because, well, you can't just, you know. Well, I know because I got T-boned right. by an so ambulance once. Now my curiosity is piqued because now we have two police cars Lights are flashing, zooming down South Beach Street. So I'm like, oh hell, we'll go down South Beach Street. I got nothing better to do. So I go down South Beach Street because I'm curious. You know, like where are they going? Because that's because I had just read this article, right? So I get down, and I, I, at some point, um, an ambulance, I think it is, comes from behind me. I like how Tammy is actually an inadvertent cop blocker. Oh, <laughs> So she, this this fire this you know ambulance or fire truck I don't remember comes down and this also going that way so I'm like well I'm, we're in the right direction right because I'm not racing I'm just right. seeing if I can 
I get down, so I now come down South Beach, I'm meeting up with Brown, and there's the interchange to go to the highway or continue. The police have it completely blocked off and are forcing all cars onto the highway. Wow. So I'm like, well, that, I'm not, I don't want to get back on the highway. I don't want to go to Bedford. Like, what if I'm going to the what fire if ring? Right? What if I'm right there? there? Right. Like, I don't want to get on the road, go yep. across the river to Bedford. That doesn't get me closer to home. And I really don't want to go to South Willow. So I, smart me, does a U-turn. I'm like, screw this. <laughs> I do a U-turn and I cut through like Presidential Road under the highway and I come out up on um, Ken Burma neighborhood, which brings you down that little hill, mm -hmm. which I knew I couldn't get. Cause I could see there was something down there. And I'm thinking, geez, there's all these lights. I hope this isn't another shoot. Like, I'm, is it something at the firing range? Like what is happening down there? I can see some smoke, but that doesn't mean anything. So I come down to the Ken Burma, and I know I'm not going to be able to go down Brown Ave. So I go back up through whatever that neighborhood is that drops you off on Goffs Falls, and I come down to Goffs Falls, because now I'm curious. And meanwhile, I've, every time I'm at a light, I'm looking on Queen City, and I see that there's a house fire. Oh, wow. Okay, well, now we know. So I, now I'm coming north on Brown Ave, like away from the airport. And there's the firing range and stuff would be on your left, and there's the All Town Mobile Station which is completely open for business and pumping gas. Next to the All Town, and the reason they've got the road blocked supposedly, not supposedly, but is because they've got a water main hose running across from the fire hydrant. So that okay. makes sense. Mind you, there are like seven fire trucks and a, you know 10 police cars all in this thing. So there's the gas station. There's a little cape next to the gas station. We're talking no yard, right next to it. And then right next to that is the cape that had the fire. Okay. There are no flames shooting out of the roof or anything. It isn't like, not impending danger enough that the gas station's not closed <laughs> right there. <laughs> so I'm like, so. And also fire and gas. Right, I'm like, it's not know. that dangerous. <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is, just seems strange that they're diverting people way up the road to onto the highway. And this young teenage girl comes up to me and she, she, I can see the look on her face and I go, I go, you're stuck too, aren't you? And she goes, I work at McDonald's. Oh. She goes, and I can't get there. She goes, I tried to come down and they wouldn't let me. So I had to go up onto South Willow and come all the way around. And now I can't go this way. So I look, critical thinking stick jumps in. And I said, well, what you need to do is you need to go down this road, which I looked up is Raymond Street. Right there, there's a road, right? There's all these police officers. There's a road, which then turns onto Gay Street going north again towards like Summit Packaging and the Holiday Inn. And then there's um, Winston Street, I think it's called, which is a one way coming in <laughs> that brings you out where the air, but it goes to where the airport diner, which is nowhere near where this fire is. And I said, you're gonna have to go there. I said, go again, who cares if it's one way, just drive, what are they gonna do? Take it you, they won't let you leave. Or, and walk across the street to your job. Cause she's like, I'm 20 minutes late. You know, she's worried about her job. Right. So then I thought, well, now I'm going to go that way because now I'm curious. <laughs> so sure enough, everybody's going up the, the road and we're going into Summit parking lot and doing this loop around their circle because everybody's just trying to get from point A to point B, which is blocked. So finally I turn, I, well, I don't care, I'm going to go up the one way. There's nobody coming in. You've got the road blocked. I go up, I pull into the Holiday Inn parking lot and there's two older gentlemen there talking about how they've been watching this for an hour and they can't figure out what the heck anybody's doing. And I said... They, they didn't even know it was a fire and they can see the house. I said, yeah, it wasn't like a raging fire from what I could see, but I don't understand why they're making people get on the highway. Why aren't they down beyond this street where the Holiday Inn is so that people can divert around the scenario and continue down Brown Ave? And I thought, how come this happens all the time? You see it all the time with the parades. They block the bridge and people are like, well, I can't figure I'll, out I'll, what's going on. I'll tell you why, because there's no cost to inconveniencing That's what Dan the said. taxpayers, right? So so the thing becomes, it's what's, and, and you see it actually, you see it in the legal world too, right? So when I was a corporate lawyer, mm -hmm. it was very easy to tell the, uh, I worked with sales and marketing, yeah. that's it, Logitech and Apple, right? And so the marketing people want to come do something crazy and it's a lot easier to be like, no, <laughs> than it is to be like, well, let me figure out the nuances of right. exactly how far you right. can push something. So what happens with the police is there's no cost to making us unhappy. But the question becomes, 
could we fix that problem, right? So what if there was a citywide app, I don't know, that allows you, if you're in that scenario, to immediately rate the response and right. be like, so they can, because you know, the police love what they, they call love data. Pre predictive policing, right. which is actually pre-crimes. But I mean, why aren't they predicting what to do in these scenarios? So, but they are, but what they're predicting is, this is the easiest for us. This right, right. That's is what the Dan easiest said. for in, it, us, so we don't care if Tammy has to drive to Bedford to get around because okay. it's the best for them. Right. And you know, I, I was given on the benefit of the doubt that I thought, okay, the cars that I saw racing down Beach Street thought they were going to an emergency. Although when I look at the timeline, that fire had already been going on for a bit, so... I'm not really sure it was any, no longer an emergency. I mean, maybe there were 30 homeless people. I don't know people who've had 30 homeless people living in their house. Um, so we, so I can understand when the police arrive in the fire department and everybody first arrives, there's like chaos and everybody's just trying to just block the road off. Let's just make sure we got it under control. But I'm talking 20 minutes later easily, if not a half an hour later, because I've taken the time to drive around and now I'm watching like, What's going on? The fire trucks are literally leaving the scene and they still are diverting people onto the highway. And I thought to myself, this is not really okay. And then I started thinking, is it just this one incident? And it's not because I mean, remember when we had the West Side lockdown in 2016? I mean, they locked down a neighborhood for right. seven and hours nobody knows for, what... for, for a, a, which was a massive inconvenience, yep. right? And again, there is no reckoning because it's kind of like, well, whatever. Well, what are like, you going to do? So Fire have, them? I, I'm always amazed at how many people are not aware. Like if you live in Manchester and you're not aware that there's a St. Patrick's Day parade or all these, you know, there's all sorts of incidents, road races and whatnot that take place on Elm Street that do close down the road. I get that. And they, they'll put those wooden barricades on the west side of the bridge. But there's no indication <laughs> why you don't know. Uh, so uh, then you start out on Grand, you know, you you start out thinking you're coming across Queen City or across Granite, and you can't. So you go, oh, that's okay. I'll go up to Bridge Street. Oh, but I can't. Yeah. And you're like, okay, now I don't know which way to go. Do I keep going north or do I go back? So all they have to do, but I mean, they have parades all the time or road race that just ha hang a sign. We have a sign department that just says detour due to road race. Use Queen City. Ta-da! Right. This is not rocket science at all. No, and I mean, do you even need a sign? Haven't we paid very expensively for those roads? Well, road whatever. Signs I'm with just saying, but if we, don't stuff, wanna, so... if we don't want to deploy the digital, just make a sign and keep it in the sign place. And you know, <laughs> write it on a piece of paper and put it all with <laughs> duct tape. Considering, <laughs> considering we re we force private businesses to hire public employees police and sheriff's department and whatnot to stand in the road on the side of the road when supposedly they're doing uh, traffic control right. when they're not they're standing on the sidewalk and half the time it seems like on their cell phone just doing something else making you know sixty dollars an hour but we require that but we don't require the police or the highway department or any of it to try to inform the citizenry how to where to go when there is this disruption. The girl and I was talking to, like I said, my hairdresser, she lives in Hopkinton. They had the snowstorms. Roads were down. She goes, I completely understand that roads were closed, but I couldn't figure out which one was. Like, just put a sign that says use something road and I would have saved 20 minutes guessing. Right. And and because we know that there was such a big turnout when these things happen, right? right. So, so I've always been curious why there's such a massive response mm. when something happens. And I think it's, it's, uh, uh, it, it's almost a show of force. It's to be like, look, we, we're you all know, here. we're out, we're well, about, I mean, you know, the sirens the, are going, ten, look, we're earning what our were keep, ten right? police office cars doing at a fire? They're not putting out the fire. So, and they're not really helping with the traffic. No, you're not doing any of those things. So I'm like, ah, I don't really get it. So, um, yeah, and I, I, I think there is talk of once again increasing the, the police size in Manchester, and that has uh, consistently been the case for the last 15 years. And then and they say they can't get anybody to fill out applications, though. They said... Um well, you know, I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't want to be a cop in today's world no, or a and, firefighter. And, and, and both because, you know, I think people are hypercritical. I mean, I've always been critical of the police. I think if you have 
the authority to kill people, then, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to hold your feet to the fire yeah, a little bit. Um, but, you know, there's there's a lot of bad stuff. So we are getting police robots. I think we talked about this maybe a little bit. But so I heard there are now two police robots being deployed in Manchester. Really? One is being used down on the west side on the rail trail. That's one of the areas that they're starting with it. It um, has a camera on it. Now, my questions might huh. be, you know, under the right to know laws. Can I see the footage? Body cam footage is exempt from right to know. So is this right considered a body cam? And one of the other things that's starting to happen is they're actually doing police interviews with their body cam cameras so that they don't have, have to, to disclose the interviews, which seems a little... Shady. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> twisting the rules so, a bit. So there's going to be a little work to do there. But, you know, I had a really interesting conversation with um, one of the guys. He drives a big red truck, and I always park my uh, – to drop into the trail with my dog there. And we often, like, we're yeah. there, you know, so it's just a neighbor I chat to from time to time. And he told me about these robot cops. I, and he was joking, and he goes, oh, I guess we're at RoboCop time. And I thought, you know, we shouldn't be joking about it because the question becomes, how would you program, how would you program your robot cop? Okay, so let's say we have a robo cop. I just don't really know. And you take the last 10 cases that the Attorney General of New Hampshire has filed as a justified shooting, mm -hmm. which includes things like shooting people yep. in the back while they're fleeing, which, you know, I don't know that about anyone. That was never supposed to be the rule, right? That doesn't sit right with me. And and, and for like a drug bust, not for, right. hey, I caught you raping grandma. Right, More right. like, oh, you were smoking some weed and I'm going to shoot you in the back, right? So that's not cool either. So I, I actually asked this guy with the truck. I was like, you know, like, Imagine you actually took these court cases or these hearings and these proceedings and these decisions that the AG is making to protect officers, right? Um, I mean, there is a leniency right. in how, it's, I, I, how, I how these things are addressed, right? So let's say you take those. Would you feel comfortable programming a robot cop with the same facts and fi facts as a decision that came out yeah, of the it, AG's that, office. That is questionable. So, I mean, I wouldn't. I'm not well, and I'm trying to think of the scenario on that rail trail. So what is the purpose? To just surveil? Pretty much. Well, so, I'm just I mean, saying, I think it is. We, we, well, I we mean, are, since when are we, since when did we as a people or the state legislature approve We did robot not. Surveillance? Listen to this. This is the other thing that's happened. Oh, look. I mean, <laughs> I mean unless, they're just it's out not there. Like, the tech is, is. I mean, I, it's not like they're investigating a specific crime. If they're investigating a specific crime, they might have justification for to surveil. That's. I'm not saying police can't surveil to solve crime. But a robot like cruising down the bike path. There's those are people's front yards in that in that video. Though that's me walking my dog, you walking your dog like what what when do we ever well we since? didn't and the other thing I just heard is that um and I know because I worked on these bills, we it is illegal in New Hampshire for police to have uh, license plate surveilling yes, um, to cameras, it, right? right? And these are basically cameras that they can have, and they have them in most other states. So they can read your license plate, and then if they're looking for someone, they can pin right. you. Or they could just be like, oh, you're late on inspection, or here's you're your like, ticket. here's whatever, right. or, you know. So it is used sort of like pre crime yeah. as well, right? So in New Hampshire... License plate scanners are supposed to be illegal. They're not allowed to use them. So I remember at the time, and I would have to go back and look just in a little more detail, but I did hear in the past week that they are now putting these scanners on fixed um, things, like on traffic lights and on uh, street lights and stuff, because they're like, oh, this is a cute little loophole. Everyone was like, you can't put them in the cars but because that's like roving, pole. but now we're going to do mm. this. And I was involved, um, I don't often talk about it because I lost the case, so I'm kind <laughs> of embarrassed, but I did work with the ACLU 
back maybe like six years ago at um, City Hall, they were talking about putting up cameras yep. that they were going to use to uh, do exactly yep. this. And we were like, you can't actually do that in New Hampshire. You can't just have roving right. cameras right. and surveillance. Like, we didn't, we didn't we sign up. That, hey, right. like, we didn't sign up, big bro, for the Panopticon yet. Like, get our permission, right? I mean, they're surveilling us with our phones and all of that, so maybe that chip has sailed. But it's like the tech is jumping forward. Very few people are watching what's happening. They're going to take as much chances as they can, and it seems like they are. Like, it's just de facto. Yeah. Like, oh, we're doing these things. And it's like, who what approved is, and then I, wait, and then and flipping, it, flipping it back again. So they've got all this tech to surveil and find criminals. But yet, when you give the police... I, in my personal experience, give the police a video of a car hitting your car where you can clearly <laughs> see their license plate. You can't get them to find the, like, the perpetrator. And you hear about it all the time. And they're like, I gave them the picture and I gave them this and I, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's frustrating. Look, I mean, I wouldn't want to be a police officer. I don't think it's a fun job. No. Nope. Um, you know, I, I, certainly people are sort of ragging on it. I have heard people, in fact, I heard uh, Kelly Ayotte talking about uh, more law and order, more back in the blue, more of that. And I'm like, do we need more of that or do we need to start we thinking We kind of just more need more decency, not more policing so holding yeah. holding individuals actually accountable for their actions as opposed to oppressing everybody yeah so that is the thing right that is the problem with big government is eventually we we trend towards punishing good people yep. for the outliers who did a bad yep. thing right and and that is a really bad um, way to run a society we're gonna run I, out we of are time. Gonna, and I wanted to say one thing so my friend Susan um, lives on the corner of West Street and Parker Street over in my old neighborhood and she posted I think it was Tuesday morning it doesn't matter one of the one of these past mornings um, her overnight security cam picked up um, going down the sidewalk on Parker Street towards my old house where three bears. Wow. On camera, though. She's like, this is my, I live in Manchester, and this is what my camera caught last night. And it was kind of funny because I was like, is that really? Where what? was Goldilocks? I mean, it was, it was a mom and two good-sized cubs. They were like almost mom-sized, but they were headed right towards my old house, I'm assuming to the bike path. Right. Or to the river. Oh, maybe, yes. maybe, maybe the robo couple give us really good nature yeah. footage. So, anyways, I thought that was a neat little tidbit. Um, that is all we have for this week. We will be back next week. If you have anything, email us at manchtalk at gmail.com. Otherwise, we will see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.